In this mini lecture, all I'm gonna do is show you how to submit your project. So in FOL, you've had all these specifications here since halfway through the term. So I'm gonna be inside of this file, just showing you what I'm doing here. So I have this file up right here, and down below all the credentials, which are all up to, up to date in here in that file, by the way, you go down, here's what I need submitted, three items. SQL database, root directory, WordPress login credentials, which can be saved in a text or a Word file. Those three things need to go in the Dropbox by the due date, uh, which for you guys, um, as in this semester, is Sunday at 11.59 p.m. That might not be exactly the same if you're watching this video. My online students have a different due date. Uh, okay, so you're going to, if you're in ZAMP, do what you did at the end of the test. It's quite simple. So I have up in Chrome here at the beginning, my ZAMP site, so you don't need to really do anything in WordPress to submit. Once everything's set up and it's in your site, you don't even need to be logged into your site. You go directly to localhost or localhost colon 8080 if uh, that's actually how you had to set it up because the port was being used. You go to PHP my admin. You would go right to databases and from databases you would click on the database that is your final project. Make sure you do not click on like your test, your midterm database or WordPress, uh, which was WPDB01 for the purposes of our demo site. Now that's the one I'm actually using as an example. Yours likely has a custom name that you named your database for your final project. So make sure you're in the right one. When you click on the database, it'll pull up the tables and you should be able to tell by going to WP options that it's associated with the correct root directory. So as I keep saying, the example I'm using is my demo site for WordPress. You guys would not probably have that root directory. If you did, you never change the root directory, which is something I ask you to do, which is not really gonna affect your mark. It's just it's the right way to do it, to set it up, do a brand new install. So you should be accessing your root directory for your final project. Make sure that's the case. And what you do is, I'm gonna go back and do it one more time. You go databases and you click on the database. You do not hit export from the main PHP my admin screen. You do not hit export from the main databases screen. And you do not just check the box on the database and hit export. None of those three things will give me what I want and you will get a big deduction if you don't give me the right database. You need to click on the database, and then once you're in and you see all the tables, you hit export. That's it. And you do it the same way in GoDaddy, and I'm gonna go in there and show you that now in a second as well. So I'm doing GoDaddy and ZAMP in this same video. So here, uh, you can leave it set to quick, get the SQL file, hit go. It compresses all the content in your database. It's all your pages, all your posts, everything in WordPress that tells it which plugins and all that stuff are installed. It doesn't necessarily mean I, I have the plugins or we'll be able to access them. Those, those are actually in your root directory, but it, it tells WordPress what is in there. And you can throw this on your desktop so it's nice and easy to find. And once it's there, you don't need to open it up. I mean, I can open it up and quickly show you what's in there. It's just a big pile of text. And if you start to scroll through it, you'll see your posts and everything. And it should be organized similar to mine. If not, you may have downloaded the wrong one. So you have to make sure you've clicked on the database to open up and expose the tables in the browser. And that's when you download. So that's the first thing I need. The next thing I need which again, when I get to the GoDaddy part is gonna be quite a bit different, but it, on, a, on a PC or Mac, you get into your hard drive and you go to where the ZAMP folder is. So I can only demonstrate PC, so I'm gonna do it that way. I go C, ZAMP, HTDocs, and you know which root directory has all the stuff for your final project. You click on it, you right click, you send a compressed zip folder, you archive, however you do it on your Mac, you zip it up. Okay, so I would send a compressed zip here. That might take a minute because there's gonna be a lot of stuff in there. Okay, and once that's done compressing, which I'm not even gonna bother doing here, it just takes too much time, you're going to submit that particular item as the second item. And you saw I did an example here for the test that was already sitting there. So it would be zipped up and you'd submit that. So now we're two items in. Okay, you've submitted your database and your root directory, and you could submit those to the Dropbox all simultaneously or one at a time. I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me how you do it. If you do something and then resubmit, I always look at the most recent submissions. So you overwrite. So whatever was submitted 
at the latest time before the Dropbox closes what I look at. You don't need to email me and tell me about that. The third thing I need is your credentials. So your login and password for WordPress. So what do I need to use when I go to this particular screen here? So when I go to whatever your directory might be, be it GoDaddy or local if I have to install it in XAMPP, what do I put in these two places? That's the third thing I need. Submit those three things and that's what needs to be put in the Dropbox by your due date. For my online class, it's the middle of the week. It's Wednesday. For you guys, it's Sunday. It's whenever I've specified the due date in FOL is when you turn it in. If you're on GoDaddy, let's get to that part. So GoDaddy, you don't really need to get into your WordPress site. You just log right into GoDaddy. And this is assuming you've set up the proper cPanel account in GoDaddy that I told you to set up. There are a few people across my sections that just didn't follow my instructions, missed the class where I covered them, and then go ahead, went ahead and did their own thing and set up WordPress hosting. And I'll get to that at the end of this video because that's going to be a bit different. But you're going to go to your account and you're going to log in. So I'm logging into my account, which will basically show you pretty much the same thing you're going to see. You get in here and you'll have a bunch of products. You'll probably have a lot less than I do. And you'll click on web hosting and go to manage and you'll go right into your cPanel. So manage, cPanel, manage. Once you get in there, you don't need to go to your WordPress installation. You don't need to go to the files just yet. The first thing you want to get is the database. So you go down and you go PHP my admin and click on it. And when you click on this, you're going to see a screen that's basically identical to XAMPP, almost the same. And you follow the same exact instructions. So you click on databases and you click on your database. Now, if you set this up in my class, very likely you should only have one database here. And I never change these database names so I know what they are. Like, I just let GoDaddy name them appropriately. And then as I build my databases up, they're usually in order, I would click on the appropriate database I need to export and do that. You guys should only have one. You don't click on information schema. You'll probably have that in there too, but you'll have a database and information schema. Click on the database expand it to show the tables and hit export. Do not, just like in XAMPP, do not hit export from anywhere else in the PHP MyAdmin dashboard. Okay, don't be back here and hit export. Don't click on databases and hit export here. You have to open the database and then hit export. Now you don't have to check these. It's the same as XAMPP. Once you get here, you can just hit export and everything will be in there. That's how you do your database in GoDaddy. To do your root directory in GoDaddy, it's not much worse than, than doing it on your own computer. It'll just take a little longer because you have to archive it from the file manager if you're not using FileZilla, which I have demonstrated, but when it comes time to turn it in, I, I know most of you aren't, so I'm just gonna show you how to do it this way. Click on the file manager. Everything you do related to web in a GoDaddy account is going to be in the web root. It will, by default, it will probably have you here in the home directory or possibly here. You want to make sure you click on web root. And if you don't, once you go into it, you can just click on public HTML. So once you click on public HTML, which I'm already in because I said go right to the web root, you should only, ha this whole thing should be a WordPress directory. So you should see your, your, your WP config, you should see all that stuff. So what you do is you go and highlight everything in that directory and you compress. And then you give it some time and once you compress, after you give it some time, you refresh the screen, it's going to name it whatever the name of the first file would be and then there'll be a compressed version of it. So I'll go into one of my WordPress sites and actually show you an example of this. So if I wanted to, for example, um, Bulldog uh, Turbine is a WordPress site. So you guys, again, you will not have this much stuff in your file manager in GoDaddy. You have to deal with that because I'm trying to show you an example with my account. You'll have this. When you go into your public HTML account, assuming you made that main domain, the main website, this is what it'll look like. You'll have a WordPress site. It'll have the, the basic folders, the admin content and includes, and it'll have all these WordPress files. You'll see the WP config there, the WP links. It'll have all the usual stuff. It'll also have some other stuff that GoDaddy's put in there. Highlight everything. Don't worry about what it is. So go highlight it all right to the bottom. Okay, sorry. Um, get back out to, uh, I want to go up one level there. Get back out. Oh, no, didn't do it. So you'll see this. Okay, highlight it all. So go right to the bottom. 
and control A doesn't really work, so you have to make sure. Okay, good, I'm at the bottom. So with everything highlighted, you click compress. And then it'll tell you, do you want to compress all this? Yes, that's great. Zip archive is fine. Compress files. Now it'll take a minute, and what it will likely do is name it according to the first name of the file that you went to compress, in the list you went to compress. So when I close this now, um, I don't see it, so I'm going to refresh. Okay, I'm going to go back in there. There it is. So you just have to refresh. And don't worry about the name. I, I could care less what it's named. Like I keep saying, it's going to pick the name of whatever the first thing is in the list. It compresses the same way a Windows or a Mac does. You can rename it if you want, whatever. You download that from GoDaddy. You put it up in your root directory. You don't even need to open it. You just download it from GoDaddy, put it up in FOL, sorry, as your root directory, into Fanshawe Online. Okay, and then finally, as a third thing, just like with uh, your local host account, if you have a .com or a .info or something, you're gonna have to log in the same exact way. I need your credentials for, for this page. Those three things. Now, finally, at the end of this video, I will explain what you should do if you are one of those students that by accident, when you set up GoDaddy, you did not set up cPanel hosting, which you set up was called managed WordPress hosting or basic WordPress hosting. Managed WordPress hosting actually does give you access to your database in a roundabout kind of way. I'm not even gonna show you how to get there. If you set up basic WordPress hosting, you can't even get to your database. And neither of these options will allow you to get to the root directory. So I haven't decided how I'm going to handle that yet, but I still need you to show me your content before your grading appointment, okay? Or if you're in the online section before I officially tell you it's due because they don't necessarily have grading appointments. So for you guys, you can't get here, okay? What happens with you if you set up this WordPress hosting is you will be, um, let me get back out to my account here. Uh, my account. You'll go to the screen and you'll see web hosting and you'll click on it. It'll probably say WordPress hosting and you'll click manage. And it, it, I think it takes you to a screen like this too. But when you click manage from here, it does not open up this control panel that you have access to in this hosting, which is actually the same price as the WordPress hosting, by the way. And that's why I'm upset that a few students did the wrong hosting. It takes you directly to log into your WordPress site. So what you need to do if you're one of those students that has no access to your database or to your root directory, the best you can do for me is export from WordPress to show me all your content. So you need to log into your WordPress site. And this isn't really relevant to the rest of you. If you already know what to do, you don't keep, need to keep watching this video. Um, you need to log into your WordPress site. Oops, that was this one. Huh. What am I typing wrong here? One, two, three, my property. There we go, jeez, I was typing too fast. You need to log into your WordPress site. You need to go to tools, as I demonstrated to you in a previous lecture. You need to go to export, and you need to export all content. So this will also include stuff from some of the plugins you're using as well, which will show me a little bit of your work, but it's it's very important that if if you if you ended up doing this by mistake, you you have to make sure that you're on time for your grading appointment. I'm gonna need a little extra time to go through your site because of the way you submitted it. So, but you would download an export file, and then that's the only thing in addition to your credentials that you can submit. So you'll only have two submissions if you made the mistake of setting up WordPress hosting with GoDaddy, and there's nothing I can do about that. And I don't know how I'm gonna handle that in terms of deductions, but that's the way it is. Hopefully, um, if this is in a later term, none of my students have done this. Um, if you're in the online course and you set up WordPress hosting instead of cPanel hosting, like traditional economy hosting with cPanel, you need to email me so we can figure this out. But uh, that's how you submit your work. Um, those are the three things, and I've shown you using both platforms, either remote or local, local remote in that order, uh, how to do that. Are there any questions? Okay, good. So this will also be posted in FOL, uh, well, as now.